good morning to everyone today we are going to conduct a student program uh, and a motivational talk on crispr cas system and its applications a modern era tool in molecular biology the talk will be presented by dr v navin kumar founder and director immunogenics biosciences before the scientific talk i call upon professor rajeshwari hari head of department of biotechnology to deliver the welcome address thank you dr anand babu uh, good morning one and all present here and all the other departments uh, today uh, we, are, we are going to have the webinar on the modern uh, uh, invention or modern uh, one of the modern problems in the uh, in the system it is a crispr cas system and its applications a modern era tool in molecular biology techniques so this is going to be presented by dr navin kumar venkatesan who is the founder and managing director of immunogenic biosciences private limited welcome you sir for this uh, webinar and uh, i would like to introduce the speaker of our session dr navin kumar uh, by the introduction uh, he did his ug pg phd from madras university in the field of my medical microbiology and postdoc from helmholtz center for infection research germany and uh, his postdoc studies is on uh, vaccine research pertaining to streptococcal infection uh, for both his uh, pg phd and postdoc he has received grants from indian and germany government to pursue his studies this shows that he is well versed and a renowned person in the field of medical microbiology his mom is uh, research interests are molecular microbial diagnostics microbiome antimicrobial resistance bioinformatics and immunology uh, there are an empty number of publications both international and national in his credit and and uh, he has actually obtained a grant from birac for uh, setting the bio incubator uh, incubator system uh, under the bionest grant for uh, for for developing many diagnostic kits at present he is de developing a cost effective kit for many infectious diseases for uh, for identification of many infectious diseases and in particular the antimicrobial resistance detection Uh, in a cost-effective manner. Uh, once again, I welcome you, sir, for this uh, seminar, uh, webinar, and uh, uh, the students and the participants will be benefited because you have a vast experience in the um, diagnostic kit where uh, the CRISPR-Cas9 technology plays a major role uh, in the development of these kits. Welcome, you, sir. Welcome once again. I welcome all the participants. for our uh, webinar thank you thank you thank, thank you. you thank you yeah, thank you at the outset i would like to thank uh, the entire uh, educational research institute uh, dr jishwari uh, from the department of biotechnology and all other faculties for inviting to give a talk on crispr uh, cas technology currently uh, uh, more to in So let me share my screen. So uh, next few minutes, I'm going to talk about uh, this podcast system and if we how it works and also its application. So before going into the talk, I just a brief introduction about our startup uh, company. It's called Immunogenics Biosciences. What we are doing is we are innovating to simplify the uh, infectious disease diagnostics uh, by by three way. One is like by reducing the time, cost, and technology at the same time keep the sensitivity as high as possible. So 
So we have a very good expertise on microbiology, immunology, molecular biology, and bioinformatics. And putting all together, we are developing a lot of uh, innovative diagnostic tool for infectious disease. So one of them is CRISPR. So currently, we are working on a CRISPR-based diagnostic for many infectious diseases, especially the AMR and uh, many other pathogens. Uh, apart from that, we also do a lot of uh, services to the scientists, students, and uh, the whoever want in these areas, microbiology, molecular biology, bioinformatics, and immunology. Uh, we can do anything related to that, even the NGS facility we have. So uh, today's topic, like CRISPR. Um, so before um, uh, 1987, nobody thought that uh, bacteria will have an immune system. Like how human has uh, uh, their own um, innate and adaptive immune system. Nobody thought that a tiny bacteria could have their immune, own immune system to like an adaptive mechanism like a memorized immune system later in 80, 1987 they found a chunk of exotic dna in a bacteria which has a lot of repetitive uh, elements in them so i i'll go through step by step how it is evolved and how they identified it is having an immune system so a bacteria has both innate immune system as well as adaptive immune system Innate in the means, what I mean is that, like, you, you can uh, take an example of restriction endonucleases, like restriction enzymes. The moment any foreign DNA enters inside the bacteria, they digest by using um, a restriction enzyme or the uh, permeability barrier and also assembly, uh, uh, misassembly. So there's a lot of uh, innate immune uh, system involved in bacteria. So the restriction enzymes randomly cut whatever the DNA comes inside into small pieces in the restriction sites so that they'll into a small small pieces but this this is this is innate any foreign dna comes in they'll cut it but in case of adaptive immune system they have a very specific specific and well evolved well structured immune system which is like a memorized immune system so when the phage infects they incorporate the part of a genome and then when they reinfect they kill them like how human has the um, memory memory B cells and memory T cells like that. Similarly, bacteria as well, they have a, um, a memory immune system, like an adaptive immune system, acquired immune system, I would say. So uh, just to simply to say you like, um, uh, to compare the innate immune system, restriction endonucleases, they are like scissors. They're also molecular scissor, and CRISPR is also molecular scissor, but what is the main difference is that the restriction endonuclear scissor cuts randomly. Like uh, you take a scissor, you, you cut a piece of paper, you can cut it into many different pieces without any shape or without any order. Uh, there is no like um, a specific way of cutting, right? Whereas in case of CRISPR, it is like uh, a specific cutting, a very well structured, this is the area you have to cut. This is the area you should not cut. So it's like a well controlled automated cutter. So there is well structured, pre-designed protocol uh, given to the mission. They'll go and specifically cut it. Similarly, the CRISPR cuts very specifically at specific region, whatever we tell to CRISPR Cas enzymes. So it's like uh, restriction enzymes doesn't know who is uh, enemy, who is the uh, a friend, so it kills everything. But whereas CRISPR able to really differentiate, uh, like how an uh, army, like for example, take an Indian army. Without knowing who is Pakistan, they can't kill the Pakistan, right? Whereas, if that mechanism is not well understood, the, there is there is a suicidal phenomenon. Even you kill your own army. So in, in these cases, restriction endonucleases can be harmful even to kill their own um, um, cells, where they play a, um, a DNA methylation a role for uh, preventing from the uh, killing of own cells. Whereas CRISPR, first time they memorize, okay, this is the army people for Pakistan. This is the army for China. So then they specifically know who, who to kill and who not to kill. So similarly, the CRISPR act the same way. First time when a phage enters inside, they attack the bacteria and a part of genome will be captured by the bacteria. First time the bacteria would die or it will survive based on the mechanism of viral infections. It's a lytic or lysogenic cycles. So then the part of a genome enters into the CRISPR-Cas system. And then the next time in the same phage infects, what they'll do, they will cut the phage genome into a double standard break. So the bacteria will survive, the phage no more can get infection. 
So it's first time it see first time infection. It's a memory, and second time they have a memory. So when the um, phage infects again, uh, they will break the uh, uh, phage DNA, in, phage DNA or a viral RNA into a pieces so that they can't infect anymore. So moving on to the CRISPR, the main thing. What what do you mean by CRISPR? CRISPR is nothing but, as I said, an adaptive immune system. It's a cluster regularly interspaced palindromic repeats. So what I mean by cluster? So they are arranged as a cluster. And also, they are regularly interspaced. What I mean by regularly interspaced is that these uh, diamonds are spacers, which are similar sequences, which are palindromic repeats. So these black diamonds are repeats, which has a uh, similar sequences. This is also similar sequence. This is also similar sequence. The sequence will be similar in all the diamonds. Okay, these are that's why it is called as interspaced palindromic repeats. Okay, what is mean by spaced? So these color bars are nothing but the spaces. Okay, I'll come to it de detailly. These are spaces which are acquired from the fathers, plasmids, or any other genetic material which is harmful to a bacteria, which will be incorporated. So it will be in this direction. So this is a leader sequence where the incorporation takes place. Upstream to the array, you have a gas system, so which is a main um, a hero of the uh, CRISPR uh, gas system because they are the one which is act activate the nucleus system. Okay, so the functional mechanism, as I said, um, uh, they recognize the genetic material of uh, plasmids or virus, uh, which already infected them. So these are precedors. So once they had a, a, a spacer in them, and then they can really go on and uh, clean the, um, the virus, which again encountered the bacteria. So to talk about the history, as I said, uh, before 1987, nobody thought uh, uh, bacteria could have their own uh, immune system. In 1987, uh, Ishano et al. Like, found uh, CRISPR. What they have found is that there are a lot of repetitive elements were there, but they don't know what it is. They have found it. But in later um, uh, 2000, uh, they have found it is present in many other prokaryotes as well as archaea. So to say like it is 40% 40, 40 of bacteria and 80% of archaea has uh, CRISPR in their genome. So in 2005, they found that uh, these uh, elements propose immune system to our fathers. And later on, like they found uh, how it works and also it can be expressed in many other system. And so the main CRISPR era started like in uh, 20th century, I would say. So these are the three uh, big players like uh, Jennifer Daudana, Emmanuel Charpentier and Hanks. So these are the um, uh, three big um, uh, CRISPR pioneers where they have uh, taken the CRISPR to the next level of using them into a genome editing. So this can be used specifically like how uh, we have used the restriction enzyme from the bacteria for cloning and other stuff. Similarly, so not only uh, restriction enzymes, many things what we do today in uh, our lab, it's mostly by mimicking the what uh, the bacteria or cell does exactly like for example, take PCR we take what how the replication takes place inside we replicate it in vitro similarly they use the crispr uh, system of bacteria for a genome editing so the zhang uh, et al is the first one who used for eukaryotic edits and recently uh, jennifer daudana and emmanuel charpentier received a nobel prize in uh, for uh, 2020 in in chemistry so uh, before going into that i just briefly tell you how uh, it is uh, spaced so these arrays are like, uh, these are the repeats, as I said, the diamonds, black diamonds, it's a green uh, square box. These are repeats typically have the same similar sequences, okay? And then the invaded DNAs are like the blue uh, highlighted circles. So these are the invading space uh, spaces sequence. What I mean by invading spaces is that when any ba uh, bacteriophages or plasmids comes in and infect the bacteria, they take a part of piece of a uh, uh, specific piece. It's not the random piece, a uh, part of specific piece of a, a virus, and then they incorporate. So usually this will be around um, uh, 20 to 26 base pairs, usually. So the repeats are like range from uh, 30 to uh, 40 base pairs or sometimes even 70. But uniformly, there will be a same sequence in a given bacteria, okay? And then they have a uh, Cas enzymes, preceding Cas enzymes, usually Cas1, Cas2, and the main nucleases. Cas1 and Cas2 help in the acquisition of spaces. And there is something called trace RNA, which is transactivating RNA, which helps in the uh, forming of uh, guide RNA, which will, I will uh, cover in a couple of slides. So this is the arrangement of CRISPR locus. You will have a lot of repeats, 
and in between each repeats you have uh, spaces which is nothing but a foreign dna material which is incorporated as a memory okay and then you have an enzymes for uh, cutting them and then uh, the tracer rna for guiding them where to cut so this is how the mechanism works when first a phage infects the first step is called acquisition where a part of a genetic element is taken from the phages with the help of a few cas enzymes like cas1 cas2 and then they incorporate into near to the leader sequence so it will be like uh, from uh, downstream to upstream is usually the incorporation takes place so it is from 1 to 10 this way uh, from uh, 3 prime to 5 prime so then after the incorporation what happened there's an expression system a crispr expression array system so once when the mrna express that is something called pre crna these are small small rnas with a repeat i said uh, it's these are diamonds are repeats right so they form a hairpin loop structure so the pre crnas are cleaved by a couple of cas enzymes into a crispr rna so these crispr rna with you could see the green color blue color a violet color and orange color right these are spaces nothing but a, a complementary uh, nucleotide or oligonucleotide specific to your phages say for example this green color is specific to this phages which is invaded okay and along with the cas9 enzymes they form a ribonuclear complex and then when the similar phage infects again there is an interference or the same plasmid enters inside they will go and match with the incoming uh, viral dna once the complementary is achieved they chop into uh, small pieces okay there thereby it it gets the immune system so this prevents the um, um death from the infection of virus or like some lethal plasmids entering into the bacteria so it's it's basically three step acquisition expression interference a phage infects and incorporation of spacer sequence uh, in the repeats again there will be another phage there will be a new spacer and new repeats will i mean the same repeats will be incorporated into the uh, cassette okay the expression takes place and the uh, crnas will be available with the cas enzymes only when the, when the same phage infects again they can uh, kill it right otherwise they can't kill a new phages so as i said the system works like acquisition insertion of first phage genome and then uh, expression expression takes place and pre crna form and then that will be cleaved into small small crnas by a, a group of cas enzymes and then finally uh, you have the interference where your uh, plasmids are invading um uh, the viruses the same viruses which infected before will be killed so to talk about the part of crispr sequence systems so the first thing is crispr locus as i said there's a crispr array you have a repeats the spaces spaces are obtained from the phages or plasmids and the leader sequence and cas enzymes and then tra tracer rna okay and the next thing is cas enzyme cas enzyme is the main uh, uh, nucleus domain like restriction endonucleases but this is well targeted because they have a, a crispr rna along with the tracer rna so they will they know where to cut so once they found a target they'll go and bind and then they will make a double stranded cut so these are two domains ruvc and hnn domains two domains in the um, uh, cas enzymes they'll cut a double stranded break they form a or loop and then they cut it okay and then the next is the uh, uh, pam sequences uh, pam sequences is uh, nothing but uh, the protospacer adjacent motif these are the uh, protospacers what do you mean by protospacer is that we call this as a spacer right the preceder or the origin where the uh, the spacer originated that is called protospacer like for example this could be a phage genome okay so far genome and the spaces and then they will go and bind to the protospacer adjacent to the pam sequence this is very very important only the back uh, the targets will be recognized based on the pam sequences this three uh, sequences are very important a protospacer adjacent motif and this is the uh, cas enzyme uh, which is like bound to a guide rna with this is the 20 base pair nucleotides and uh, so once it is uh, had a, a complementary basis to the target and adjacent to the pam sequences they will form a double stranded nick 
okay this why why this guide rna or this is tracer rna is present because it helps them help them for binding with the cas enzymes so these are the there are some domains in these uh, loops attachment to the cas enzyme so the uh, the guide rna the uh, single guide rna is very very important uh, it is um, composed of uh, a 20 base pair uh, sequences complementary to your target and then the uh, the scaffold the gui uh, guide rna scaffold which is a tracer rna okay so usually in in in, with, in vivo system how it like so that's what in the five prime end you will have a specific 20 base pair nucleotide complementary to your target specific it could be far specific plasmid specific or anything it should be specific and three prime end is the tracer rna okay so in vivo it will be like this a 20 base pair nucleotide of uh, crispr rna and uh, they are complement they are bound to a tracer rna but what scientists did is like they instead of making two pieces they made a single piece attached with the uh, tracer rna so then it is become easy for um, uh, using in a in in vitro applications in vivo still it is the same so uh, like apart from uh, uh, cas enzyme like as i said like uh, the guide rna is very important the tracer rna binds like this which they have bound and then they formed as a guide rna so just for the um, so what they did they just tried it why can't we just connect them uh, with, instead of uh, forming a pair and it worked well so in a, in a way it is like easy for the manipulations so uh, components of cleavage like what are the very important components as i said the pam sequence is very very important apart from all the arrays and other things if the PAM sequences are not recognized, they will not cleave. So they will first go and recognize the PAM sequence. For example, in case of Cas9 enzyme from uh, Streptococcus pyogen, the PAM sequence is three bases. It, it is NGG. So in N, in the place of N, it could be any nucleotide. Okay. So these are uh, some of the uh, specific uh, PAM sequences associated with each different Cas enzymes. Like how we have different restriction enzymes, the Cas enzymes also, there are many different Cas enzymes, Cas9, Cas12, Cas13, Cas14. So each one of them have their own uh, uh, PAM sequences. So first they recognize the PAM sequences in the target. Once the PAM sequence is identified, then they'll go and cleave it. So this is how it works. First, the tracer RNA will be expressed and then the CRISPR repeats array will also will be expressed. As I said, some of the protein present in the CRISPR will uh, cleave them into a small, small uh, CRISPR RNA. And once the tracer RNA form a complement to the green area, they form a guide RNA. So this is where we artificially connected them and then they're using as a uh, in vitro tool. So once this uh, gRNA, guide RNA is formed, they form a complex with the Cas enzyme and then they go and specifically bind to the targets whichever the targets as the uh, specific complementary basis, uh, once the PAM sequence is found, then they will cleave the uh, complex and form a double standard nick. So I just wanted to show a small video. So this is how the Cas enzymes goes and bind. When the phage infects, what happens? They inject uh, genetic material. So once they inject, uh, they get the memory. And once the memory is there, when the second time they infect, what happens? The, the CRISPR RNA, the, this yellow color is the 20 base per CRISPR RNA. And this one is a tracer RNA. They first form a complex that become a guide RNA. So this guide RNA now will search for the targets. Once the target is found, they will form a binding, then form that's called a hard loop. A DNA RNA hybridization will be there. And then once it is formed, the cut will be there. So this is how the uh, CRISPR RNA works. So by using this technology, you can literally do um, a many programmable uh, specific way of editing. Uh, not only into bacteria in, in in many cells like human cells animal cells plant cells specifically it can go into the nucleus 
and specifically wherever they want they can go and specifically uh, find the this is a pam sequence you see first it is identified the pam sequences once the pam sequence is identified then they'll form a specific cut double standard cut that's it so they form a double standard nick okay this is how it works So there are a lot of uh, types of CRISPRs are available nowadays. Like there are two classes, class one and class two. These classes are basically based on the uh, the number of components involved in it. For example, there are many components in case of uh, class one. It's not like single enzyme uh, based cutting. There are multiple uh, cascade of enzymes involved in them, and then for the cutting. And uh, in case of class 2, it's a single um, enzyme based cutting. For example, CAS9, CAS12, CAS13, CAS14 are best examples. Uh, so they form a single enzyme, single enzyme domain. So they'll cut the uh, targets. Whereas in case of class 1, it comprises of type 1, type 3, and uh, type 4 uh, CAS uh, system. They have a lot of CAS enzymes need to be involved in, in, in order to cleave the uh, targets. Okay. So that is why it is uh, it comes in class one. Class two is a single domain. And also very specifically, I, what I want to tell you here is that there are some which is associated with the PAM sequences and with some of them not. One example is the uh, uh, type three, which doesn't uh, require a PAM sequences, whereas the rest of them require PAM sequences. And also please remember that not all the CRISPR will cut the DNA. So for example, uh, type two, type one, uh, and also the type 5 cuts the uh, DNA, whereas the type 3 and type uh, 6 cuts RNA. So you can even cut the uh, mRNA, like kind of RNA silencing. Uh, instead of RNAi, you can use this system for uh, specifically uh, cutting the mRNA or uh, any specific RNA in the system. Okay, so even the specificity of targets varies. So these enzymes, Cas9, Cas12, and Cas3 cuts DNA. CAS10 and CAS13 cuts RNA. So adaptation, uh, processing, and interference. So what scientists have done is that using like uh, uh, CRIS CRISPR enzymes, they've made a modifications because of a lot of uh, off-target defects. I'll come to that, what do you mean by off-targets? So in order to avoid that, they made a lot of uh, modification in CRISPR enzymes. They inactivated one domain, which is cutting, so only one domain will click it. That is called as nickase because it form a nick. And in another case, they form a null mutant where both the uh, cutting enzymes are cleaved. So in that case, what it means that here it form nicks. And in this case, it will not cut. It will just bind to the specific target area. So each one has their own um, uh, applications. I'll come to it. So moving on to the application, CRISPR now into the many fields. Uh, now it's, it's, it's going to be the next uh, um, modern era of molecular biology, I would say. Because you take anything, uh, diagnostics and, uh, and gene knockout, gene knock-in and disease therapy. Like for example, CAR T cell therapy, cancer therapy, uh, HIV uh, treatment and drug, drug screenings. For example, you identify the drug targets and epigenetics and also agriculture and also like uh, embryogenesis. Like you can edit the genes at the embryo, embryo level itself. Um, so I'll give you some of the examples. So the wide variety of application CRISPR has, that is an advantage of CRISPR test system nowadays. So literally you can um, manipulate the genome very specifically. You can erase some part of the genome, incorporate new part of the genome. So very, very easily, it's not like that a tedious. Golden days, it was very tedious. And now it's very, very easy. Uh, like within a, within a day, you can really manipulate a DNA. So uh, I'm not exaggerating. Soon or later, like you can, if you want, you can change your uh, eye color into blue and your hair color into uh, different colors. It's, it's really a DNA editor and uh, it can write and erase whatever you want. It can be used for uh, treatment. And even sometimes they make uh, even superhumans like with this full of uh, great skills and other things. And also for the application of agriculture and farm animals also can be used for the incre increased yield of the crop as well as the animal products. So as I said, it can be used in many, um, many uh, applications. 
especially the genetic engineering tool it's a very big tool uh, like a uh, restriction enzymes these are very very specific and uh, in a, a very specific manner they can yield a lot of uh, genetic modifications so the way back it started from darwin's theory to a lot of inventions happened like dna structure uh, sequencing pcr restriction enzyme discovery now finally we are in the era of uh, genome editing like zinc finger nucleases talens and crispr okay these two are like protein based i'll come to it and crispr is like um, rna based or dna based so uh, we have like similar like mega nuclease zinc finger nucleases talens and crispr cas enzymes so this is a most uh, uh, easily used because these are protein based these all are protein based and these are proteins that specifically bind to the uh, dna okay so then they'll cut the uh, double stranded uh, nick all of them form a double stranded nick but these are like uh, guided by the rna these are like protein based as i said these are protein based these are rna based okay these are amino acids which go and bind to a specific basis so as we know that uh, the cell has a dna repair mechanism they form a double stranded break and they can rejoin by repair mechanism so there are two different mechanism non homologous enjoining method and homologous direct repair method what happen in case of non homologous en uh, enjoining method is that once the dna has a double strand break they automatically delete few bases or insert new bases and form a um, uh, repair mechanism that results in um, indel mutation that is our insertion or deletion that results in frame shift and then finally the, the protein uh, loses its function in case of homologous direct repair if you have a piece of uh, sequences which are similar to the area where it form a break they can really incorporate new piece of dna where it 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 helps in repair or novel function you can bring in um, uh, activation of a, um, uh, like a dormant gene so so many things you can do by homologous direct repair you can correct a mutation so many things so by using crispr we are using the repair mechanism double stranded repair mechanisms so what happen uh, you can break a double stranded break wherever in the genome you want and then either you can go for non homologous enjoining repair method so this method is preferred only when you want to go for a knockout knockout method knockout of any gene specifically so mostly you go for a, a, a either up i mean the most uh, n terminal part of the gene is targeted because of the uh, full inactivation of the protein sometimes what happen if you go for a c terminal domain there may be still remaining activity of a upstream part of a protein so mostly it is the n terminal part is targeted in case of knockout in case of homologous direct repair what happen you also along with the uh, crispr enzyme and the guide rna you put a piece of uh, dna with the with the interest of gene you want to incorporate so once the double stranded break is formed there is a homologous enjoining repair method so they form a insertion of a new genes so it's a, it's a knock in method so you can do a knock out a knock in by using a crispr cas system so this is how it works and the modification of uh, crispr as i said uh, crispr nicase can be used cas9n with two different adjacent locus can be targeted they form a nick and there is a homologous uh, non homologous enjoining repair method whereas in case of homologous enjoining repair method you put a piece of sequences with the correct uh, change in the nucleotide and then you will have a precise editing so also like you can do a crispr base editing without cutting this is another advantage of crispr uh, a modified modified version of crispr uh, cas9 enzyme along with cas9 they were, they were incorporated a cysteine deaminase so the spacer uh, they along with the cas9 they go and find the targets once the target is find this the cysteine is edited and so that your idea uh, like um, uh, cysteine is converted into uh, thymine so in this way you can really specifically uh, even uh, one single base pair can be uh, edited so that is the advantage of uh, cas9 enzymes so by using this mechanism people have edited bacteria fungi um, animals and human cells as well as plant cells also so there are a lot of um, uh, crops have been edited like uh, soya bean mushroom uh, banana so there are a lot of even in india they have done a lot of uh, uh, modification in plants so why crispr is like they are more efficient very versatile easily adaptable 
because it's an RNA level, not at the protein level. And also the possibility of multiplexing. What I mean by multiplexing is that at single point, you can target many genes. So the main issue with the CRISPR enzyme is specificity and also toxicity. Sometimes it kills your own cell also, sometimes off target effects. And delivery is a big problem. Delivering to the eukaryotic cell is a big problem nowadays, but there are tools available like you can use viral vector or liposome based vector or electroporation. There are many methods that are available for delivery. So one example like uh, this LR LRRK gene, which is associated with Parkinson's disease as a uh, um, um, mutation. So what happened is first you have to choose which locus you want to choose. For example, this is a locus responsible, uh, like anything you can target. So this is a locus responsible for Parkinson's disease. So we, we designed the guide RNA. Guide RNA is nothing but a 20 base per nucleotide specific to the gene and a, a tracer RNA, okay? And then the, the homologous repair you have to do, right? So you have to put a piece of uh, DNA sequences, which is similar to the, uh, adjacent to the, uh, the area where you want to cut. So once you transfect the cells with the, both the plasmid of Cas9 with the guide RNA, and along with the um, homologous uh, segment of DNA, once a double strand of break is formed, they will form a, a homologous recombinations. So the G is now converted to S at the position of 2019. So in this case, you can understand what is the role of this gene in Parkinson's disease or any other disease. Similarly, you can either um, inactivate the gene or activate the gene and understand the function of the gene in a given system or a disease. So these two are uh, plasmids and can be transferred to a cell line. Similarly, uh, thalassemia can be edited. So the cells are taken and the hematopoietic stem cells and then they're edited by delivery by uh, lentiviral vector or adenoviral vectors, the deliver system. And then after the modification of the beta globulin, again, they're transferred into the um, human. So these are like um, currently um, are done by CRISPR, even um, muscular dystrophy they have done, and then uh, um, color blindness, they have tried it, it worked well. And uh, you all might have heard of like uh, the scientist, I mean, the physician in uh, China, he, he has, uh, uh, what he has done, he changed the DNA at the embryo level itself. Because so far in the world, there's no approval for human embryo editing. You can edit the somatic cells, but not the embryo cells. So what happened here is without any permissions, without any ethical clearance, what he had done, both the mother and father is HIV positive. So what he did, he modified the receptor that is CCR5, the core receptor responsible for HIV, modified so that the both, these are twin babies, both of them are naturally resistant to HIV infections. So even though his work was successful, but uh, since he, he didn't get any ethical clearance and it was a big problem, now he is in prison in China. So like this specifically, you can edit a lot of genes, but uh, in, in, in concern embryo, it is still in a, a regulatory aspects. A lot of regulations has to be um, followed. Otherwise you will be in trouble. As I said, it has been tried in a lot of plants, uh, bacteria, fungi, and animals. So in case of uh, xenotransplant, uh, people have tried making a uh, pig into a more uh, a humanized pig. So there are a lot of uh, uh, CRISPR-based editing has been done in um, uh, pig embryos. This traditionally takes a lot of time, six months, but it takes only uh, 20 to 30 days in case of uh, CRISPR, using CRISPR. So even in monkey, they have tried by using CRISPR, they have edited uh, the genome. Specifically, they cleaved a part of uh, genome and then they've uh, made uh, variations of the monkeys. And human embryos also, they started uh, editing. Uh, first one is the Chinese, and then now in Russia, they have got approval for the uh, human embryo editing, but it should be closely monitored. Similarly, in case of industry applications, uh, we use a lot of bacteria for the fermentation, right? There is a big problem of phage infection to the bacteria. So they, what they make, they make bacteria naturally resistant to the phages by incorporating the uh, CRISPR array into them. So when the phage infects, they will kill the phages. So they make a sensitive bacteria to a phage resistant bacteria. 
so these all uh, need a uh, um, designing of uh, the guide rna which especially the, the 20 base pair uh, sequences so it should be 40 to 80 percent gc content the length should be minimum 70 to 24 be below that will lead to a lot of off target effects uh, what i mean by off target effects is instead of targeting a gene a uh, it will go on target uh, b c d uh, randomly they go and bind and send the result in death of the cells so that is off target and non specifically go and bind so that need to be avoided and one tool you can use is the chop chop a chop chop is an online tool where you can design a, a guide rna for example blenching is there and chop chop uh, they again broad institute as and horizon as so these are the different uh, uh, online designing tool you can use for uh, guide rna design it's very simple you have to design a, a 20 base per guide rna uh, why, why it is called as guide rna is that because it guides you to tell like where you have to cut in a specific dna in a 20th um, uh, 212th position you cut it so they specifically they go and cut by complementing the region of target interest. So this is how it works. You put your target of interest where you want to cut, especially the uh, the exon sequences, the coding sequences, and you will get uh, uh, a 20 base pair uh, targets. And then based on the scores, you determine which can be taken for the design. So you have to synthesize it and then uh, either by using plasmid or you can in vitro, I mean, uh, by oligonucleotide, you can synthesize and use for uh, cutting of uh, complex. And also you can check for the off-target effects by uh, checking the uh, your guide RNA, whether it will uh, go and cut in many places or not. So once it will not cut many places, then you can choose that as a guide RNA. So as I said, the modified uh, um, Nikase, I mean the Cas enzyme, can really reduce the off-target effects. Why? Because instead of cutting double standard break, they made modified into a single standard cut, so that you have a highly specific cutting. Only when they are close affinity, they'll cut, and then which results in the specific uh, cutting and then less off-target effects. So similarly, there are many applications. Uh, you can completely remove both the uh, cutting enzymes so that it will become a dead Cas enzymes, but still they'll go and bind. By using this system, you can make a CRISPR along with an activated domain. It is coupled to activated domain. It can go and bind to the promoter site and activate a, a gene. So, for example, like how you add, um, in case of cloning, you add um, a lot of uh, activators so like that. In case of this, you put this Cas enzyme which really activate your gene. Similarly, you can, same way you can add a repressor domain uh, which can really block the gene expression. So in this way, you can really study what happened when the gene expressed more, what happened when the gene is not expressed. And also it can be coupled to green fluorescent protein to localize a specific uh, gene in a, a given piece of DNA or in the chromosome. So these are called CRISPR activator. These are called CRISPR interference. So this is how it is like uh, activator CRISPR uh, repressor is attached. So once it is bind to the promoter region, they will activate the uh, um, uh, RNA synthesis or they repress the RNA synthesis. Similarly, you can attach the guide RNA with the different uh, fluoropores. They will go and bind to the target of loci where you want and then fly under the fluorescent microscope, you can really see. Uh, or any other uh, uh, higher end microscope, you can take an image of the nucleus. Similarly, in case of epigenetic, uh, you can use the CRISPR uh, Cas enzyme, Cas9 enzymes, along with the, the proteins, which are like either do methylation or unmethylation or acetylations. By this method, you can really uh, understand the uh, epigenetic of a uh, locus. Also, you can uh, do a wide uh, variety of screenings. Like at the same time, you can target multiple gene at a single time and then understand the effects of each gene in a, uh, a disease or in, the, in case of uh, drug, ta drug targets identification. Similarly, you can use uh, CRISPR uh, Cas9 along with the uh, epitopes, any antigen along with that, you can have it. And then you can specifically purify a specific segment of DNA from a large pool of DNA. Along with that, you can identify which protein is bind to that and which RNA is currently uh, present to that 
So it's called N-shift method by using dead CAS along with an antigen. You can specifically purify a part of uh, genetic material from a pool of uh, DNA. Similarly, you can also have another technique called RNA targeting. If you want to silence expression of RNA without touching the DNA, you can use CAS13, which cleaves the, all the RNAs into pieces. So your DNA is really in, still intact, but your expression system will be differ, like kind of miRNA. So it, it also, CRISPR is also applicable in therapeutics. It can be used against HIV, hepatitis B, even in current SARS-CoV, they are trying um, uh, COVID-19 uh, also they are trying. So what happened? The, the guide RNA is specific to the uh, genome of HIV uh, uh, DNA or RNA. So similarly, it can be used in cancer therapy, specifically a gene of uh, cancer cells can be edited, a tissue regen regeneration can be done. And also can, in case of uh, gene therapy, you can add any genes which is responsible for uh, uh, congenital disease. Like for example, Huntington's disease, you can really modify by using this uh, gene therapy and neurons can be really modified and then they become uh, a normal uh, human. Uh, human. Similarly, malaria, um, other diseases can like Zika can be controlled by controlling the mosquitoes. It can be used in even controlling the mosquitoes by making them resistance to malaria as well as Zika, even the dengue and so on. Like as I said, HIV can be used to inactivate the virus also like by modifying the, uh, the core receptors. Also, it has been proven that even the obesity there are gene responsible for obesity that can be modified and then you can become a lean. Uh, also, the other, other interesting part of CRISPR is diagnostics. Currently, this is the area where we are working on. So how it works, uh, either you take any patient samples, urine, blood, cells or whatever past it is. If the pathogen is present, either it's a DNA or RNA virus, these enzymes along with the guide RNA, which is specific to the target. For example, if you're identifying the SARS-CoV. It should be specific to SARS-CoV, this guide RNA and then the tracer RNA. Once they found the complementary basis, what happened? They have a reporter system in the uh, tube. These reporter systems are artificially added, quencher and reporter. Once this is cleared, the fluorescence comes. So the more the fluorescence, it indicates the presence of bacteria or virus or the cancer. It can be used for uh, cancer detection, single nuclear molymorphism, infection, virus, so many stuffs. So there are a lot of different versions of CRISPR diagnostics and also CAS3, CAS13 can be used for RNA detection. So what is the action mainly here is called a collateral cleavage. Once the target is identified, it go and randomly cleave any RNA present in the, um, the system, in the tube. So there are a lot of uh, methods that are available nowadays, Sherlock, detector, inspectors. So they use a method called uh, RPA, uh, recombinase polymerase amplification, uh, instead of PCR, because it takes very less time, protein-based uh, replication. So it's the same way it cuts. Recently in India, they have found Feluda, which is again used for COVID-19 screening. Similar way, they go and bind dead cast enzymes are used for binding and identifying the uh, CRISPR enzyme in the uh, COVID-19 targets. So this is how it works, either DNA or RNA. These enzymes cut it. You can either direct by gel or by using a fluorescent visualization or by lateral flow strips because a specific antibodies against these uh, targets are attached. So they'll form a line, similarly like uh, the Feluda. So these two are for DNA, this one is for uh, RNA. Only CRISPR, uh, CAS12 and CAS13 do a collateral cleavage, this is target cleavage. Collateral cleavage in the sense, it can cleave any molecule within the um, tube, but whereas this only cleaves the targets. The last final one is CRISPR typing. Now this is more like multi-local sequence typing or um, many other typing methods available for bacteria. So CRISPR typing is mainly used for outbreak evolution, strain tracing, so many stuffs. So how it is done is that you need to amplify from each bacteria. For, say for example, you have uh, five different bacteria from, uh, from a region. Say for example, there is an outbreak in Chennai uh, of cholera. 
okay so then you I, I, isolate from five different patients and amplify their entire cassette and then see the spaces arrangements so it is really um, it is impossible to have a similar event at the same time in two different bacteria say for example this bacteria is originated from france this bacteria is from chennai the infection of phages at different time period is different so it can't be the same so by using this what happened we can really trace whether these two different bacteria are similar or different in origin see for example in this case the event of infection of phages are similar in all these but suddenly in this area this the strain has become different because the strain one it has a new phages whereas in case of strain to the phages not there so by tracing the spaces in each bacteria you can really identify whether the bacteria are similar or different like that you can do a crispr typing so for example this is an antibiotic resistant salmonella enterica zero or uh, crispr sequence typing so by by understanding the number of cassettes and similar cassettes in the genome you can really identify the uh, similarities between the strains see for example in these two strains uh, more or less the crispr locus is same but they lack three spaces so at that point they deviated into two different strains the phage infections has happened in two, two different places because it is really unlikely uh, the even to happen at uh, two different places at the same manner so this is can be used so the tool can be used as crispr finder you can you can do a sequencing and then put the crispr sequence into it and then finally you can identify the number of spaces in that and you can identify what is the spaces it's responsible for phage or plasmid or what what it is you can really identify that and last there's something called polygotyping the same way of crispr typing is a different method instead of doing sequencing you can do a probe based method and then do an hybridization on a chip and then do a scanning on based on that you can really identify uh, which strains are close similar and which strains are different these are can be used for kind of epidemiology studies so uh, in case of uh, uh, genome editing or in case of uh, if you want to work on crispr you can really use a vector which already has a cas enzymes and also any guide rna can be incorporated into this they have with the two different promoters because these are small rna so that they have u6 promoters so different polymerase so this can be used it can be used for um, um, generation of many uh, complexes of uh, ribonucleic complex from grna along with cas9s so uh, so you you can have a plasmids in for specific for bacteria c elegans drosophila mammalians parasites plant yeast and zebra fish and xenopus so you can really use these uh, different plasmids available in adgene you can get it specifically and can use it so to finally end you can use cut base edit you can make it you can use for epigenetics you can activate interfere you can screen you can purify you can edit rna you can visualize so you know, so many stuff but finally there are a lot of ethical concern when you go for a human modification you need to be very careful there is a human uh, global uh, uh, key for the gene editing and there is one example of uh, where you can really escape from the regulation is that one example is in case of mushroom they have modified the uh, polyphenol oxidase where it is responsible for the browning of uh, mushrooms this is not regulated in us why because in us only when introduce a new gene into a organism it is considered as a gmo so that it has escaped from the uh, regulations thank you so much and if you have any questions i can happy to answer thank you sir thank it was you. a wonderful presentation uh, actually yes. i have only one question uh, so you told that we can specifically uh, cut the genome from this crispr cas system uh, and also you told about the yes. pam sequence which is very very essential for the cas to yes. recognize so in case the pam sequence is not present 
at the position where we want to cut. So how we can cut the cut the jeans? Yeah, good question. So what happens is that like is it, the cam is very 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 important to specifically target the jeans. So first, it recognizes the three bases of pan or four bases of pan sequences. Then one will look for the adjacent region. So there are now uh, modified versions of Cas9s that are available. They work without pan sequences. Okay. So you can go for uh, different Cas enzymes like Cas10, which doesn't even require a pan sequences for identification. But you should be remember that. The moment you get rid of PAM sequences, the after epigenetics increases. Okay. Because instead of okay. targeting target, you can go and target many cases. That is the okay. advantage of PAM sequences. But yes, of course, it is okay. sometimes difficult to design in a specific region of your interest. In that cases, you can go for a PAM sequence. Okay, so in case of indel knockout, uh, we can uh, cut it at any place in the genome. So in such cases, it doesn't matter. What you said. Yeah, exactly. Even like indel, uh, as you say, like if you cut it in any genome, what happens? It becomes lethal to cell. Mm. So you can't target any genes at a time. So what happens? Mm. The cell becomes cell die. You can't study anything. What is the function of the gene? So, if you want, the yes. aim is completely uh, uh, not the many genes. You can use that system. No, no. Or in the particular uh, gene only, I'm saying. In the particular yeah. gene, we can cut at any time, anywhere. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. that's true. Or if your uh, interest is on coding sequences, you can look for coding sequences alone. Especially in case of eukaryotes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Naveen, for the most informative and vibrant uh, talk about the CRISPR-Cas system and its applications. Hope it was a new learning session for many of us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, now, you. I call upon Mrs. now I call upon Mrs. Deepa Lakshmi, Assistant Professor, Department of uh, Biotechnology, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Occasionally in life, there are those moments of unutterable fulfillment, which cannot be completely explained by those symbols called words. They mean can only be articulated by inaudible language of the heart saying, thank you. I'm very much humbled and honored to be the one making the closing of today's function by proposing the oath of thanks. I, on behalf of the entire fraternity of the of Dr. MGR Educational Research Institute, Department of Biotechnology, extend my sincere thanks. First and foremost, I thank our founder and chancellor, Sir A.C. Chanugam, sir, and our honorable president, ACS Arunkumar, sir, for giving us this golden opportunity to conduct the webinar on the CRISPR CAS system and its applications, a modern era tool in molecular biology. We are grateful to thank our vice chancellor, Dr. S. Geeta Lakshmi, ma'am, uh, Provost Dr. G. Dr. Krishnan, sir, Mr. Dr. C. B. Pandivelu, sir, for the wonderful support for this successful event. I especially express my heartfelt thanks to Dean Dr. Sandal Velan, sir, for his support and guidance. I would like to express my special thanks to our beloved HOD, Dr. Rajeshwari, ma'am, and our deputy HOD, Dr. Gomati, ma'am, for the valuable support, guidance, and encouragement in all our efforts. I would like to express my special gratitude towards Dr. V. Navin Kumar, sir, founder and managing director of Clinic Science Private Limited, for accepting our invitation and spending his valuable time apart from his busy schedule. His speech on CRISPR CAS systems and its applications was excellent and bestowed us with this invaluable knowledge with this excellent presentation. Last but not the least, I owe my special gratitude to our organizing committee, technical team, who have worked hard to ensure that this event will become a memorable success. Finally, I thank all the participants for devoting their valuable time and cooperation in making this event a resounding success. Once again, thank you all. Thank you, Mrs. Deepalakshmi. Dear participants, the feedback link has been posted in the description below. So kindly fill it up for the e-certificates. Thank you all for allotting your valuable time for attending this lecture. See you all in another lecture. Have a nice weekend. Thank you.